good afternoon, everyone, and uh, it's, it's an honor to be uh, in Huntsville today, uh, especially to be at this uh, Huntsville Regional Laboratory. You know, uh, we're facing a tremendous crisis in our general fund budget. Uh, in this crisis will affect every Alabama county, uh, and if it's not addressed by the legislature, uh, it will cause tremendous damage to the state of Alabama. As we discuss the financial challenges to the general fund, well, we're faced with two options. Cutting funding for agencies that will leave them unable to provide services or raise revenue to continue to operate. Now, neither option is ideal, but there are only two, and this is the only two that we have. This week, the House and I have two very good House members here with me today. Representative McCutcheon and Representative Hall are, are with me here today. Uh, the House this week announced a proposal that will increase revenue for the general fund. And I want them to know and I want the members of the House to know how much I appreciate their attention to the fact that we need new revenue for the general fund. Their proposal, however, does not go quite far enough, but it certainly is a step in the right direction. Just a few minutes ago, I was able to tour the Department of Forensic Science Laboratory here in Huntsville. It's a very uh, impressive facility that we have here. This department provides forensic services to law enforcement agencies across Alabama. Their purpose is to provide unbiased scientific analysis of evidence in the pursuit of justice in the criminal system. The Department of Forensic Science was actually established in 1935 and is one of the oldest forensic agencies in the country. This facility is an asset to the Huntsville area. And if the legislature moves forward with a budget proposal that cuts funding for the agencies, this Department of Forensic Sciences will have to, to, will have to close. And the decedents that, are require, that require an autopsy will have to be transferred to Montgomery. This laboratory serves 22 counties in North Alabama. These counties are Blunt, Calhoun, Cherokee, Claiborne, Colbert, Coleman, DeKalb, Etowah, Fayette, Franklin, Jackson, Lamar, Lauderdale, Lawrence, Limestone, Madison, Marion, Marshall, Morgan, St. Clair, Walker, and Winston. Other impacts to the department include the elimination of toxicology services in non-criminal traffic-related deaths. This will affect all Alabama counties and those who require a department death certificate to claim death benefits. Toxicology analysis on suicides and natural and accidental deaths and traffic fatalities of non-criminal nature will end. There will be an elimination of all, for all Alabama counties that uh, in, in arson cases and fire debris. And this will require law enforcement and the state fire marshal to submit fire debris evidence to private laboratories or to the Federal Bureau of, of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms for analyses, and they will have to shoulder the financial burden for the analysis and the testimony cost. Loss of highly skilled personnel, resulting in even longer wait times and increasing backlogs. Implementation of state layoff procedures to department personnel will, be, will take place as needed. Because of the budget cuts to the departments in the past, there is already a wait time on getting death certificates. Any further cut would cause Alabama families to wait even longer to resolve the estate of their loved ones. Any further delay is unacceptable. I have presented a plan that would not cause any of these drastic cuts to the forensic scientists. And as I've already said, I, I want to tell these members of the legislature of the House how much I appreciate them taking the first step that they took last week. Uh, many of the things that I proposed are in the plan that they are proposing. 
And, and this will be a first step in keeping laboratories as this, our Huntsville Regional Laboratory, open. And I encourage the residents of North Alabama to let their elected representatives know that these cuts are unacceptable. Michael Sparks is the director of the Department of Forensic Sciences, and I'd like for him to come up and speak for a minute about his agency and the service his staff provided. And we also have the assistant director, Angelo Delamana, who will speak to the services that this laboratory provides this area. So, Michael. There's Mike. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, I am so proud uh, that the governor has been able to uh, take time out of his busy schedule to come here to the Huntsville Regional Laboratory of the Department of Forensic Sciences. And I'd also like to welcome him and also Representative Hall and Representative McCutcheon. They're good friends of ours in the legislature that we work with nearly on a daily basis down there. Thank you, members of the press, for being able to be here today as well. Uh, the governor has already said it very well and very eloquently, so anything that I do will just be to add to what he said already. We, the Huntsville Regional Laboratory of the Department of Forensic Sciences, and by the way, the Department of Forensic Sciences is the state crime lab. We are the only accredited provider of forensic services in the state of Alabama. So we actually serve all of Alabama citizens. And we're here today to talk about this latest decrease that's potential because of a lack of funding in the general fund and how it will affect the Huntsville, this Huntsville area with the Huntsville Regional Laboratory. And as the governor's already said, we serve the northernmost 22 counties of the state. Uh, the last year alone, we had uh, over 5,000 cases that came through this particular laboratory was brought to this lab. Now that includes 440 bodies. When the governor said we like to use technical terms called decedents, well those were people who have passed away, it's their bodies that we do exams on those bodies. So we had 445 to come through this facility last year we, and we had 5,000 other kinds of cases, whether it be uh, forensic biology, drug chemistry, firearms and tool marks, and et cetera. We offer seven functions to the criminal justice system and to the citizens of Alabama. We serve statewide 450 law enforcement agencies, over 400 court systems, and 64 coroners on all the reports that we do. And that's a pretty good uh, return on your investment with just 196 employees. We're very proud of them, and I am very proud of my employees. We, they work very, very hard. Uh, I push very, very hard, and, and my compliments are always to them. So anything that we're looking at and any kind of reduction, my first priority is to always protect the people. That's who's working the cases. So what we'll have to do here in this, if the budget that I have now that's in the uh, house or the one that's been projected so far, I will have to close this facility is what will happen, along with the other uh, things that the governor has already mentioned, the fire debris, the toxicology uh, will continue to be done on decedents only, but what that means to people who are, uh, say you have a one vehicle accident out on the highway, somebody hits a tree and it may not be criminal, but each life insurance companies will not pay benefits until such time as they receive a report from us that the individual who died is not under the influence of some drug. So those particular things we'll have to cut out because it's not direct support to the criminal justice system. So it, it's, uh, it's very sobering to us, uh, but, but we have great hope for the future and we have great hope and confidence in our legislature and also in our governor. And I cannot thank him enough for taking this on as, as a project. Uh, at this time, I will turn it over to Angelo Delamana. He's, all, he's the assistant director for the agency, but he's also chief of forensic biology. And he has a special part about that, about the uh, CODIS data bank that he's gonna bring to you at this time. Thank you, Director Sparks, uh, Governor, and Chairman McCutcheon, Representative Hall, thank you all for being here. Um, one of the primary services that this great facility uh, provides for all 450 plus law enforcement agencies throughout this state uh, involves the analysis of forensic biology and DNA testing for the northernmost 22 counties. And this is the only connection for all of North Alabama to the FBI's national DNA database. The FBI uh, partners with each state for the uh, testing and searching of unsolved cases and convicted offender DNA profiles and the routine search and upload of those profiles. And just in the last year alone, we have identified over 700 offenders as the perpetrators of violent crime, uh, a large number of those just from this area. 
uh, the closure, unfortunate closure or potential closure of this facility would jeopardize the timely identification of those unsolved cases because currently we are searching greater than 14 million DNA profiles on a weekly basis, not just from within Alabama but from throughout this country and notifying all those other forensic laboratory systems of those matches arising out of North Alabama and all of those would be delayed further with the closure of this facility. It's a sobering thought to think that this great facility may close. Uh, next year would mark the 60th year of this facility in North Alabama and that would be the first time that there wouldn't be a, a crime laboratory service provided from the North Alabama region. Uh, a lot of people liken our agency to the hourglass module. You know, at the top of the hourglass you have over 450 different law enforcement agencies identifying and collecting physical evidence. They then submit it to the crime laboratory, which is the center part of the hourglass, which chokes everything, and then ultimately can't go to the justice system, the judicial system, or the district attorneys until that evidence has been analyzed by one of our facilities. So losing the facility in North Alabama would certainly be um, tragic and a, and a great detriment to the citizens of that, this area. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Governor. Thank you. I'd like to uh, now open it up for questions, please. So where are we on the road to surpassing this obstacle? Uh, I thought that last week uh, the House of Representatives uh, took the first step uh, in, in trying to begin to solve this, beginning to solve this issue. Uh, Obviously, $200 million is not enough to do what we really need. We really, we really need $541 million. Uh, that's the amount of money that we have determined that, that is needed by the state. But there were a number of bills that were passed out of committee last week, uh, approximately 180, possibly uh, $200 million with savings. Uh, and, and this is a first step. And, and I'm just very proud of the House for doing this. The, uh, the committee, uh, they passed this out, and uh, the House will be taking this up uh, possibly next week. And uh, if, if they get this through and get a budget through, uh, then we will be uh, putting pressure and calling on the Senate to at least adopt that amount of funding. Now, is that the, uh, an adequate amount to do everything that we need to do? No, but it certainly is a first step in the right direction. You finding yourself with still significant legislative uh, opposition? Opposition, yeah. Uh, well, let me say this: uh, two months ago, uh, everyone in the legislature said that they were not going to vote on any taxes, uh, and now the House uh, sees the problem, and they have recognized that there truly is a crisis in this state, uh, and they know that we have to have more revenue. And revenue means taxes. Uh, and I think that what they have presented, are, these taxes are fair. And, and as long as they present fair taxes, then, you know, this is, we're making the steps in the right direction. I'm very proud of them last week. I thought last week was a very good week. The statistics that you previously mentioned obviously imply that this office is critical to the law enforcement process. If you could please just elaborate on what if you kind of the backup that the closure of this office might cause in the in the law enforcement process in the future well certainly will slow down everything and uh and and then the uh, the bodies will have to be transported to montgomery uh and and the testing that is done here will not be done here it'll have to be done uh somewhere else in the state if, if some of the testing is even done and that's what we were just talking about some of the testing will not be done it had to be done by a private entity uh, and it's but it's these are services that are provided for the people. And, and when you're in a very difficult situation, you've lost a loved one, uh, either in an automobile accident or, or some other tragedy has taken place, and you've lost a loved one, and you're waiting on uh, the testing, uh, you're waiting on autopsy results, you're waiting on uh, uh, toxicology results, and you can't get anything done until you get those results. Uh, and, and when it takes months and months and months, I mean, how frustrating can that be to families? And so, you know, this agency has never been overfunded. Never. And, and, and if we really look at it, it needs, it needs more funding than what we're even talking about right now. I mean, we're just talking about level funding right now. Uh, this agency has always needed more funding. 
And we could do so much more uh, for the state of Alabama and for the people of the state if this agency was funded properly. Do you think privatizing the services might be more affordable for the state of Alabama? Uh, not necessarily, no. These, the people that work here, they do a fantastic job. Uh, but they do need, they need more revenue, they need more help, they need uh, the equipment, they need, and if they need to hire more people, what, whatever, the, uh, whatever is needed. No, I, I don't think privatization is, is, is the answer to this. Uh, that's not, that, we, we need to fund it properly. Governor, when, when you spell out, or when Mr. Sparks spells out, the situation that you're facing, specifically with DFS, what sort of response do you get from lawmakers? What do they tell you? The legislature says, oh, we're fine with closing this facility. What kind of answer are you getting? Well, I, I think that they have to begin to look at the results of what will happen. Uh, at first, they don't believe them. Uh, we have presented, uh, we've, we've done a very good job presenting to the House where all revenue measures have to, have to originate. Uh, and, and we have put forth uh, uh, all the consequences of passing a, a zero-funded budget, which would be about $260 million short of what is needed to just be level funding. That's not talking about paying back our debts that we have to pay back. Uh, so they have looked at that, and, and I, the leadership has looked at that, and, and they recognize the need. Now, what we have to do is the, 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 the House of Representatives, they are taking bold steps. They're, they understand what the needs are, and they're stepping up to the plate, and they're doing their job. Uh, as I say, this is not enough, but this is a first step, and, and they're, they're stepping, uh, they're taking the first step, and, and I, I'm just very pleased with what they're doing. Are you optimistic? I am optimistic. We're, listen, failure is not an option. It's not, and and we're going to uh, we're we're going to we're going to win this battle, and we're going to get through this. The legislature is going to get through this, and and we're we're going to be okay. What we have to do now is we have to convince, because I do believe that the House will pass these measures. I really do believe that, and and after they pass these measures and pass these uh, revenue enhancements, uh, the taxes, then we have to uh, convince the Senate to do that. And so we'll be working on senators. I'll be making phone calls this weekend uh, and I'll be calling people and I'll be talking to them and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. But we have to continue this process and if we continue the process I think it's going to be okay. I really do. Now having said that, we, this is not enough. Uh, they only have two options in the Senate. You either raise taxes or you cut because there is no option out there that brings money in by October the 1st other than, than what is being presented by, through the House. That is the only option. If, if they don't do that, then they will be cutting. And if they do that, then this, this facility will close. October the 1st is your cutoff date. And no other option that's been talked about, including gambling, will bring a penny of money into the state government by October the 1st. Anybody else? Okay, thank you, Governor. Thank you all.